Okay, hello students. Uh, today we are going to do the second part of ITF that is solving for x. Okay, so there are uh, the first one that we are going to do is we are going to solve the questions which are of two, uh, the two marker ones. So let's say for example we have got this one particular question sine of 2 tan inverse of x is equal to 1. Okay, now People often ask, what what do what do we have to do with this? So there are two options for this. Either you can use two tan inverse of x formula, which is going to be a little lengthy, but I would strongly recommend you to do what I mean the method that I am following because it's easier. So you, what you can do is sine two tan inverse of x is equal to. Now instead of writing one. Instead of writing 1, can I write it like this? Can I write my 1 as sine of 5 by 2? Yes. Why did I do that? Why? If you will notice, there is a sign on this side. There is a sign on this side as well. So what happens is, the angle of sine over here is this. And the angle of sine over here is 5 by 2. So if I compare the two angles, this is what I will get. 2 tan inverse of x is equal to pi by 2. I can push this 2 down. So I get tan inverse of x is equal to pi by 4. Now students, I already know what exactly is pi by 4. Pi by 4 can be written as tan inverse of 1. So if I compare this with this, I will get x is equal to 1. Students, we come to another important part over here. See, it's like this, and this is very crucial for the next set of uh, questions that we do. If I've got something like this, tan alpha is equal to beta, let's say. So what is my alpha then? If I want to take tan onto this side, it will become tan inverse of beta. The same way, if I've got something like this, tan inverse of x is equal to y. So if I wish to take tan inverse onto this side, tan inverse onto this side, I will get x is equal to tan y. Alright? So, instead of doing this, can I take a detour over here and write it like this. That tan inverse of x is equal to pi by 4. So just like in this case, if I were to take tan inverse onto this side, what remains is, I'm taking tan inverse onto this side, so x remains here, and tan inverse when it goes on this side becomes tan pi by 4, and we know that tan pi by 4 is 1. This is another alternate way of doing this. Alright? This question is for two marks in your board examination. It has come once in the board exam, I think in somewhere in 2012 or 13 somewhere. Uh, this is another question for two markers. Now, the biggest problem that any student will face is, I have not done anything of x upon two types. You need not worry about it. Okay. Now, first off, this, what I will do is, I will take this as equation number one. All right. Now, if you remember, is there any, in, the, in your formula list, is there any formula that combines tan inverse, cot inverse, and a pi term? Is there any formula? Please check that. I think it will be somewhere around the 6th, 7th, 8th, 8th formula somewhere that it combines tan inverse, cot inverse and a pi term. If you will notice, I'm not mentioning the sign that is in the middle. So the formula that I'm talking about is this. That tan inverse of x plus cot inverse of x is pi by 2. So if you will see, that is what I was telling you. Is there any formula on your formula list that says that, that combines tan inverse, cot inverse and the pi term? Right. Now, under, uh, understand this one thing, students, that this identity holds for any value of x. Absolutely any value. So if I were to write something like this, can I do this? Yes, it will hold true as well for this as well. So what I will do is, I have taken this as equation number one. And what I will do is, I will write this as, uh, I will just incorporate my formula 
over here. Just to recap again, what exactly are we doing over here? I, I have this as my formula. Alright? This is my formula and this is applicable for any value of x. So what I'm doing is, as per my convenience, I'm doing this because this, this is the angle that I need in my particular question. So what I can do now is, I can add the two. So this will give me 2 pi by 3 and this will give me a 2 tan inverse of x upon 2. Okay, This just simply goes away using your uh, simultaneous equations and what will happen is that this 2 and this 2 will factor out. So what you get is tan inverse of x upon 2 is equal to pi by 3. And in the previous question we saw that tan inverse when it goes on to this side it will become tan pi by 3 x upon 2. So my value of x is 2 tan pi by 3. And I know what is pi by 3. Oh sorry tan, tan of pi by 3 is root 3. So that means my value of x is 2 root 3. So these kind of questions you can get for two marks again. Uh, this is another. Uh, this is one of my personal fa uh, favorite questions. And that is sine of cos inverse of x upon two plus sine inverse of four upon five is equal to one. Okay. Now there are again two ways of solving this particular question. What you can do is uh, either you can write this one as sine pi by 2 you can do that as well uh, so let's just go with that so that means sine of if you will remember that this particular question is in sync with the first one that we have done in this particular video one was available over here as well so we took that as sine of pi by 2 now this is something to note students if you will notice both both of these sides have got sine and sine over here the angle of sine over here is this and the angle over here is pi by 2 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just compare the two angles now understand one thing that you know there are many people out there students or teachers who say sine sine gets cancelled no it does not get cancelled you just compare the angles that's it all right so when you compare the two angles what you get is cos inverse of x over 2 plus sine inverse of 4 over 5 is equal to pi by 2. Now someone might ask what do we do with, do with this? So again let me reiterate what I have uh, told you in the second question that we just did a few minutes ago. Is there any formula in your formula list that combines sine inverse, cos inverse and a pi term. Is there any formula that combines sine inverse, cos inverse and a pi term? Okay, and there is a formula like that. That is, I think that is a seven formula that says sine inverse of x plus cos inverse of x is equal to pi by 2. Yes, so over here I can place any value of x that I feel like. All right, so this is exactly what I'm going to do over here. What I will do is, instead of writing pi by 2, I can write this as cos inverse of x upon 2, sine inverse of 4 upon 5. I can write this as, sorry, I can write this as cos inverse of 4 upon 5 plus sine inverse of 4 upon 5. Now this is a simple like your linear equation what goes away is this particular term and what you are left with is a nice cos inverse of x over 2 is equal to cos inverse of 4 upon 5.
So from this again, you can just compare the two quantities over here and you can say that x upon 2 is equal to 4 over 5. So your value of x is nothing but 8 upon 5. Okay, uh, this particular question is for four marks. Uh, this is a kind of question that has come in the past, uh, for the past two years, in 2018 and as well 2019, sorry, 2019 and 20, they have asked this kind of a question. But it was a bit more notorious one. Uh, one of the common mistakes what people normally do is, they factor out tan inverse. They say tan inverse, tan inverse, tan inverse, cancel. If that would have been the case, your life would have been easier. Okay. So what we do is, please understand one thing that we are solving for x. Okay. So what we do is we apply the formula that is tan inverse of x plus tan inverse of y. So that is so tan inverse of x plus y upon. 1 minus x into y. Okay. Now, if you will notice, there is a tan inverse, there is a tan inverse. Okay. So you can compare this term and this term. So what will happen to tan inverse? It just simply goes away. That's it, just does not simply go away. You're just comparing the two terms. Okay. So now, students, please be careful when you're dealing with the negative uh, components of this. So the numerator gives you a nice 2x and the denominator gives you 1 minus x squared minus 1 is equal to 8 upon 31. Now, there's this important thing that I have to mention over here. And that is, which formula have you applied? Tan inverse of x plus tan inverse of y. What is the condition for tan inverse of x plus tan inverse of y? The condition is that x into y should be less than 1, if you remember. So in this particular question, what is your x? Your x is x plus 1. And this is your y. So that is x into y is less than 1. All right. Now, students understand one thing, that when you are solving this particular part, you need to solve this particular condition as well. I will tell you the reason. So first of all, if you try to simplify this, 2x, 2 minus x squared is equal to 8 over 31. And this gives me x squared minus 1 is less than 1. Now, when you cross multiply and you simplify, you will get the answer as, 31x is equal to 8 minus 4x squared. And here you will get x squared is less than 2. Taking minus 1 onto this side. So here you have a 4x squared plus 31x minus 8 is equal to 0. Now, you can use your formula method from the 10th standard or you can use your direct uh, factorization whichever you want to so what I get over here is a 4x minus 1 x plus 8 is equal to 0 so that means I get the value of x as either 1 upon 4 or x as minus 8 now the reason why we have been doing this all this while is because we want to check if both the values of x will satisfy this condition or not so students if you square this this particular term you will get 1 upon 16 okay and if you square this term you will get x square is 64 this is definitely not less than 2 this is definitely less than 2 so the only solution that we require or that is valid for this particular question is that value of x is 1 upon 4 So when you're solving these kind of questions, always remember that you have to mention these, uh, this entire condition. You have to keep on solving them. That was the first thing. Second, please.
please do not take a square root over here. You cannot take square root when you have an inequality sign. That is a second component. Now, what will happen in your board exam if you miss out to write these? You will lose one mark over here for not mentioning this. Also, you will lose one mark over here because you have not eliminated one of the values. So out of four, you will get two marks. So please ensure that you do not do such mistakes. Okay. Uh, very soon I am going to send a few worksheets and stuff so please uh, be up to date with your work alright um, there are some other questions as well which involve sine inverse and cos inverse which are extremely notorious I will be doing that towards the end of the chapter because those are less likely to be questioned in your it ought to be asked in your board examination but I will be doing that in the next session, in the next uh, part of the video, we will be doing the proving questions. Alright, thank you.